So I've decided to put together a mixing and mastering course seminar um, discussion. It's a one-way discussion, but it's a discussion nonetheless about uh, mixing and mastering uh, with a focus on dance music. And dance music is a lot different in terms of mixing and mastering than uh, pop and rock music. Uh, well, more more so rock. Pop is more taking over that, taking on that uh, dancey sound. But it's all it's all relative. Um, I've been kind of humbly praised, but not really for my mixes and uh, my tracks. So um, they're all consistently loud, uh, consistently mixed and uh, mastered. And um, I do that uh, in basically a small room with uh, KRK Rocket 8s. cost me 500 bucks Canadian, a Motu and Ableton, and uh, maybe 50 bucks worth of foam and a couch. That's all I have in here. Um, my mic is kind of shitty, but... Uh, that's the only that's the only thing I went cheap on basically uh, so I really want to just kind of help people get their mixes down and I'm going to be as thorough as possible in this discussion uh, keep in mind I have no fucking idea what I'm doing most of the time uh, a year ago two years ago I thought I was good I listened to my mixes a year ago and I cringe and maybe in two or three years or maybe a month from now I'll listen to my mixes and I'll cringe but it's it's something that takes a lifetime to learn uh, people spend thousands and thousands of dollars and years of school to uh, learn how to do this and uh, a lot of the times they basically teach you you know how to plug an XLR cable in how a opto compressor works and it's it's really sad in a way because they learn things that aren't practical and i want to show you what what works for me what may or may not be practical again i'm not an expert but i'm going to show you you know how to do it like they did back in the day with dirt in their fingernails um and uh you do it in a studio that's not you know quarter of a million dollars to treat and doesn't have um super duper gear in it um but yeah uh, i think i should start what am i at three minutes cool i think i should start uh with your room uh generally i think you have a computer uh hopefully you have a computer and um some sort of uh card um sound interface be it uh, an m audio or a motu something good uh, or maybe an, uh, an apogee if you're using mac or pc it doesn't matter if you're using pro tools logic or ableton it doesn't matter if you're using free loops it doesn't matter they all share the same basic sound engine um i use ableton and we'll be going through it but basically everything kind of works the same they all handle vsts and audio units and our task plugins all the same and I hope you pick your DAW and you stick to it uh, there's no wrong DAW uh, digital audio workstation as long as it has a mixer and it has multi-lane and it has some decent headroom and it hasn't and it's been coded within the last you know 10 years it's still good uh, I hope you have monitors with good monitor placement uh, be that it's a equilateral triangle um, a little bit away from the wall your head and your speakers should form a perfect triangle your ear should match up uh, between the woofer and the tweeter in terms of height and your head should sit 30 percent from the front wall 30 percent of the length of the room to the front wall uh, try to avoid a square room um, and yeah, that's basically it. Uh, in terms of treatment, you could spend thousands of dollars on panels 
what I have literally is two Oralex panels on my wall like directly in front of my head so it doesn't so the sound from the speakers because sound radiates not in a one direction it radiates outwards and bounces off the wall and then comes to your ears so you want to get rid of that as much as you can that's just what works for me uh, so you have foam 100 percent in the back in the in the front wall and i have foam on my sides um and i have uh some, some foam they're wedges they're like five bucks each they're made by rlx and i have foam kind of behind me and i have a couch behind me with a bunch of clothes on uh with a bunch of clothes on it because I don't have a dresser. So, yeah, they say have a couch, have a bookcase, something behind you for diffusion. There's diffusion and absorption. Absorption is foam. It takes sound energy and turns it into uh, turns it into uh, heat and diffusion. The sound hits it and then it bounces off. And you want to prevent standing waves, which is sound bouncing off the wall, coming back, and then creating an interference kind of pattern and uh, creating st uh, standing waves and that's not good that's not good at all and that fucks up your listening position uh, try to put down carpet thicker the better um, and yeah that's basically it just have a good computer have a good kind of absorption-y material I have kind of a geek I have like a curtain draped above the wall as a, I just set it up as an experiment, but it actually kind of works. Um, you should clap. I won't clap now, but you should clap, and you shouldn't be able to hear any kind of uh, ringing. If you're in like a gymnasium and you clap, you hear whoosh, like a ringing. You don't want that in your room. And if you can get to the point where you don't have that, all the better. Um, but what you should do is you should just have yeah, it's, it's easy to treat the mid and high kind of frequencies, but the low end, it can get money. Say if you're, if you um, put on any kind of track and you walk around the room, you can hear uh, the bass gets more muddy when you're close to a wall. So you should have your listening position dead center, everything symmetrical, just so the wall and uh, the bass kind of gets absorbed into the wall and not the 30 percent your 30 percent listening position and yeah that would be the most important part of setting up your uh your sound kind of stage listening area whatever you want to call it um if you are recording live instruments you should generally do that in a different room or else the live instruments will sound dead but for the sake of this course class thing you really shouldn't be doing that. Uh, well, you you won't be doing that because uh, you're dealing with electronic music. You wouldn't really record a whole lot of things. And oh, I was going to touch on something else. Oh, yeah. Listen to nothing but your monitors at all times. Listen to music on YouTube, uh, your favorite CD, just to get used to your listening position and your monitors. Because you listen to it on... Um, your monitors and you know, on your on your headphones and your on your laptop, your ears won't get used to it. Generally, when you move into a new room, you have to get used to the room, and that's a bitch to do. But eventually, you get used to it, and each room you can kind of get used to. And your ears, after you train them with, or you try to train them with uh, EQing and mastering, and get used to it, your ears will compensate because you know our minds are really powerful in that regard. And uh, every, it'll it'll compensate. It's just like your eyes adjusting in the dark. Your eyes will calibrate. And not your eyes. Your ears will calibrate to um, the sounds you're getting. You should listen to a lot of music. If your music sounds weird, then your room isn't too cubic. If, you're, if your room's a perfect cube, you're in trouble. Um, and you generally want to keep your room uncube you want you want to use the length of the room and have symmetry and you want all the bad stuff in the sound the 
the the comb filtering of it bouncing off the wall to be in an area that's behind your head you want it to be occurring behind your head that's why you sit 30 33 percent or 30 percent of the length of the room and that'll help you out and uh that is part one of your listening position and studio treatment and designing stuff